What's up guys? Uh, today for the video is going to be a very long one and I wanted to try to give some context on it. Uh, it started, this all happened when Aya Alter uh, released on the CN version of the game and you know we were looking at videos, first impressions and then we got into this whole like power creeping thing which then later turned into a who is given the most contribution to the team on release which then turned into basically a two hour long discussion about Arknights and comparing characters on release to the units released before them and how much is that new character contributing to the team overall so a lot of the stuff that's early on in the video we're talking you're hearing power creep and you're hearing different terminologies we settle all that towards the end this is definitely a you know if i need some background noise type of video uh, this was from the stream so there was a lot of different interactions pauses you know bathroom breaks all that good stuff you know live stream type stuff so i hope y'all enjoy the video today let me know what you think if you even make through the entirety of the whole thing a hey, more power to you but i'm gonna tell you this man that was the most fun talking about art nights that I've had in ages, and I hope y'all enjoy it too. Peace. I'm gonna tell you why I put Aya in that group of power creeping units. Because with all these other characters, we can match them up to other damage dealers or to other tanks. It would be foolish to match up a medic that is a healer to someone that's gonna do damage. Because at the end of the day, that medic barring like two people ain't gonna do shit as far as helping clear your stage however you can compare medic to other medics and say when this character does shit and i put her on the field do i need anybody else before you could argue yeah I could have Scotty out there over here, <clears throat> and maybe I could bring like a Nightingale. Or maybe I could bring a blah, 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 blah. Maybe I could bring this character and this character as people that are going to be your healers. Excuse me. Even if you take someone like Scotty Arthur and. I don't fucking care. Someone. Saria, okay, you could you could argue, okay, yeah, you know that that's some pretty strong heels. You got a a solid group here with the Scotty. You got a solid group over yonder with uh the the Saria. Cool. If you want to say <clears throat> Nightingale and Telopsis or whatever pair of healers that you want to put together. Yeah. <clears throat> I think they're solid. But now you're taking the dynamic of having two healers and bringing it down to one. That's power crep, in my opinion. That shit, she has power crep in the entire medic class. The only thing, in my opinion, that she cannot do is the healing type that Lumen does. So if she does the fire and whatever else... And then Lumen does the other shit. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That's the only fucking thing she can do. She got a global range. She eliminates the need for a second healer. So now you can bring out another damage dealer. She can heal the, the elemental or whatever fucking type that is called. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The burn damage. She heals the burn damage. Alright. And then on top of that, she can do a heal over time. Which, Yost, if you recall, a while ago... A very long, long time ago, when we were, when we were talking about six star healers, because you remember I was talking about I want six star medics. I said that they need to have a character that does a heal over time. How are they gonna do that? Found out how they did it. All right, so she got a heal over time, takes away the need for another medic because she really doesn't need one. Like she actually doesn't. She has global range. And then can heal to burn. That to me, medic to medic. I don't give a fuck about the damage units. Fuck all them dudes. 
Medic to Medic. This, power crap. Outside of, like, Lumen. But even then, he's just a whole different motherfucking type. <clears throat> Even the best healers weren't fucking medics at the first. You really gonna sit there and say that to fucking Nightingale? Really? One of the most OG healers in this whole fucking game. For the longest standing time, we had two six stars. And Shining wasn't even one of them. Alright, that bitch was a five star. Alright? I don't care. Shining, five star. We had Talopsis, and you had Nightingale. Those were your two six stars. Alright? Don't give a fuck. <laughs> and even to this day, Nightingale is still super fucking strong because she gives arts and she has a little birdcage. That sets her apart. I don't need your fucking birdcage if I got somebody that can heal through that shit. Where the optimal way to play the game was Surtur plus 11 healers. Yeah, but... <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure there was only like 10 dudes or less that did that shit. And I was definitely one of them. Because let me tell you what. Hey, I got my little plunger right here. Hey, I was in that motherfucker, boy. Yes, sir. Hey, fuck with me. Fuck with me. Come on now. Elemental versus stat. Thank you, Trilby. I always forget what it is. Because in my head, an elemental is a status effect. But in this game, they kind of group it like that. But then what's weird is I believe that Chill and Frost is considered an elemental and it's not... Or, excuse me, it's considered a status and it's not an elemental. And I think that's what fucks with it in my head. And I even could be wrong with that. I don't know. It's just everywhere. When Scotty and Sari is all you need 99% of the time. Yeah, but now you don't even need that anymore. Now you don't even need that. Throw down your Aya, call it a day. <laughs> Alright, if you threw some cringy votes at me for that one, I would understand. That one's a little out there. I would understand. The five we mentioned earlier, Thorns, Menar, Caster, Aya, Game Release, Golden Glow, Posey. Others as well. <clears throat> now let's take this and I'm going to go from a completely unbiased perspective. Alright, I'm going I want to take into account. You're saying on release. That X character was stronger or was so OP or so broken that they power crept the rest of the ones behind them. Right, so and I, I'll just use this as an example. Vigil on release power crept everybody from here up. All right, that's the type of understanding that I'm getting at based off of what we're saying, right? So, if we're gonna go okay, on release, Chen Alter or on release, Golden Glow was stronger, some way power crept everybody, or was broken as shit when released compared to everybody behind right so we're not gonna say golden glow compared to texas right but we will say the opposite texas compared to golden glow that's the statement and foundation that i want to lay out is it is that an agreement so that way we can have the same starting point so when we start looking at all these characters <sighs> Danger, I just want you to know you made me spit water all over my carpet. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. That was fucking funny. <clears throat> Aya Caster was broken beyond belief at launch. More or less, yes, would be unfair to compare Aya Caster to Golden Glow when Golden Glow didn't exist. Okay, cool. Okay. So, I'm just going to say up to Saria backwards. Oh, no, because Chen's over there. Chen wasn't really a release character. Even then. I would agree with Aya. Okay. Let's... 
broken on release. In no order. In no order. Aya. <clears throat> and this is okay. And we'll give some some reasoning for this. All right. Aya on release was so broken. Kind of Efrit, but they fucking they didn't even release the banner at the proper time. Because she would have just melted the fuck out of that out of that event. I do agree with this. Yes. Who's the next one that you're going to? So we'll say thorns. Oh, let me, I'm going to copy what you said so I don't have to keep scrolling up. Okay. <clears throat> I don't think I have an argument for anyone before Thorns. I have an argument. The only person that I would argue against Thorns would be his quote unquote counterpart, Silver Ash. The only reason why Thorns overtakes Silver Ash is because he heals himself. That's one of the main reasons why I'm taking Thorns over Silver Ash 100% of, of the time. Now, would I say that he was broken compared to everyone else before him? It's kind of tough. <clears throat> oh, I know Blue Woman. You mean Mastema? Mastema was not broken on release. Now, Thorns doesn't have the burst capabilities that Schwarz does. Thorns was most of the time paired with someone like Aya. Because you would have Aya's skill 3 burst, and you would have Thorns holding 3 lanes. And in most cases, he could do a, quite a decent amount of chip damage. But he was a strong lane holder. I still think the thing that set him apart from everybody before him was his healing capabilities when he's not attacking. <clears throat> he still hasn't gotten a mod to this day. Nobody else can hold areas like he could, and his healing made it even easier. Yeah, I agree. I'm just trying to make sure. I'm trying to take my time and think, just to make sure. Schwarz does big funny damage. She's one of the ones that I'm trying to consider. But here's the thing is that hold. she's not really that great of a lane holder. She's going to use her ability, and she's got to wait for it to come back up. Thorns can still pop off. He can still hold multiple lanes. He can still overtime that chip damage. And it's going to help compared to what Schwarz was doing off release. And that's the thing that you got to remember is we're not including mods on any of this. We're saying when that character released versus everyone before them. I think I would agree with Thorns. I, I would agree with Thorns. Surter, by far, easy. That's not even a choice. Mudrock, that's not even a fucking question. I feel like it's fair to say Surter and Mudrock, on release, were disgustingly broken. I don't think we need to even talk about that. Mountain is debatable. Hell, Mountain might have a case. <clears throat> You're going to tell me that Mountain, who can't even hit air units, who can self-sustain, but can only hold one lane. He cannot hit air units. He cannot uh, hold more than one lane. Thorns can hit air. Thorns can heal himself. 
What's up? Can you do that with anyone else? Yes. I can do that with Mudrock, who was released right before him. I can do that with Thorns after I hit his skill two times, and that's it. Uh, you could kind of make arguments for maybe like a Saria, uh, just because she's just tanky and can just hold it and just continue healing herself. Kind of make arguments for that, but I mean, that's very here or there. But Thorns has to not be hit to heal, right? Thorns has to be inactive. He cannot be hitting, and he he can, well, he he cannot be attacking. I know that, but is it when he's getting has? If Thorns has not actively attacked two seconds, recover health, so he can get hit and still be healing himself. But if he's attacking, he will not heal. That's how that is. There we go. Yo, bag yeah, what's up, babe? How you doing, man? When's the dark mode notepad? You know, I know, right? This shit's bright as a motherfucker. <clears throat> mode Rock is the one other person who can, but using both was really good. Mm, I don't think Mountain is as game breaking or as broken as Mud Rock, who just completely outclasses Mountain on every scale. On top of that, you gotta you gotta fight against Surtur and Thor. I don't. I'm not putting Mountain there. Personally, I'm not putting Mountain there. I, I he don't. Uh, he can't hit air. He can't hold more than one lane. The already stacked competition that he has to fight against. No, there ain't no way. Change it, go ahead. Wait, how? There's a dark mode of this? Wait, is, uh, is there actually a dark mode of this? I think Baggy is fucking with me. <sighs> I think Sire should go on the list, TBH. Kyobe, best DPS. Off release, she was not that hot. Launch notepad and click the gear icon on the top right in the following window. What? Shit. Launch notepad. And this is all I get. There is no gear icon. Yeah, there is no gear icon. <sighs> Carnelian best caster. There are no enemies for her to fight against. That would actually properly do her thing. Might be Windows 11. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm still on Windows 10. No thanks. Dusk is broken. Off release? No, she wasn't. Off release? She, Dude, off release? Do you know how much... Okay, look. <clears throat> look. I don't give a fuck. Because I, I will still love these two characters with or without their modules because I love the idea of what they do. But do you understand how much copium I was inhaling when Dusk and Passenger both released? Bro, I... I was taking shots of that straight to my fucking veins. Hell no. Yeah, we're going in order. We're going in order. We're going in order. Sorry is of an is another is another case of a unit that aged well. Yeah, I agree. But on release <clears throat> Oh. Mom's going to bed. Hold on. On release, you didn't really need defenders. You could just hold that ship 
with the Vanguard and a healer and call it a day. There was no real reason that I, I absolutely needed a defender at that point in time. Here, I will let you giggle. Passenger, bruh. Yeah, I did. You want to lead Mount, leave Mountain off? I'm just bringing a case for him. I understand the case, but I'm also putting up an argument to that case. He's not hitting air. He's only holding one lane. Thorns is hitting air. Thorns is holding three lanes. And depending on, on the layout, you know, potentially. So that's why I'm saying I don't really feel that broken, must-have, OP, power creeping everybody before him. Because then you got to he's got to power creep Mudrock and Surter. That, mm, don't think that's happening. Don't think that's happening. I don't think Thorns disqualifies Mountain, though. Thorns dies if something breathes too hard on him. Bro, hell no. You, bro, when have you used Thorns? When have you used... Bro, hell no. Bro, maybe you Well, you don't level dudes, so th there's that. Bro, I'm just saying, my Thorns holds a fuck ton of shit. I, I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> Team Mountain Rise? Starcraft, you really only fuck with Mountain just because of, of Biggs. Get your... Get your bandwagon ass out of it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just joking with you. I do not, and that sounds sus. Suscraft. I think they're two different things is what I'm trying to say, though. But... That shit don't matter. We're just... Uh, look at the title. Broken on release. On release of when they came out. I mean, the fact that we gotta sit here and argue this much, I mean... Yeah, da, 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 da. All right, hey, how about I do this? I'll put a tab out to the side. I'll put a tab out to the side. So that y'all got y'all's case. I got mine. We're kind of in the middle. We're kind of in the middle. All right? So I... I'll put him there, but I'm counting the ones on the far left. <sighs> Good lord. I eat a lot of nachos. <sighs> but when you have to charge Mountain, he is just there waiting to get slapped without a healer. Bro, this is so... Let's just go to the next one. Meant to say Thorns? Yeah. We, we, we go on. Uh, All of these are irrelevant. Scotty? Hmm... <sighs> I think bro I think she is broken on release. Scotty Alter. She's one of the only characters that can heal Mud Rock. She can heal two spots in one. But see here's the issue with what I just said. One of the only characters that can heal Mud Rock. Perfumer and Angelina both can heal Mud Rock. She can put down a heal somewhere else. Well, that's because her heal isn't global the same way that Perfumer and Angelina. And then... If you want to say that she could put down a heal all the way over there, well, Silence can do the same thing. <clears throat> so someone tell me, t talk to me about Scotty Alter. I think she's a little overhyped. Somebody talk to me about Scotty Alter. Help me out. Can you make a case for Ash? I don't think you can. Ash is ya bye now. <clears throat> Sky 
Scotty enables a lot of strategies you otherwise couldn't before her. You're underrating Scotty's buff here? Okay. Hey, hey that's why I asked y'all to talk to me about Scotty. Because I do underrate her. I don't, you know, hey, I understand that she can give me a heal over time. I understand she can buff me. I can't notice the difference. I have, because personally, I don't sit here and math everything out. I don't have no damage chart that tells me with and without. So I place her down and forget. All right. So that's why I'm asking y'all to tell me about her. So that way I can be a little bit more informed. I will say though, she is still broken on release compared to before her. But I, I, I need, I would like to have some more evidence per se. Scalter definitely enables stuff to this day. She's pretty common unit. Uh, and didn't she hard power creep war fighting? Giving units more attack and defense, which is quite a few operators over the top. Exit would be trashed here. Scotty didn't exist, for example. Okay, but what about war fighting? I wish we had damage summaries after clears. That is the one thing that I want so fucking bad. I want that so badly. Girls Frontline did it. Azure Lane did it. Nikkei did it. And probably some other games. I'm just naming the ones that I've played. And yes, I did play Azure Lane for like maybe two weeks or more or less. I don't know. But help me now. My arms are crossed until the boy mountain gets unindexed. Oh my god. Warfighting buffs one single person. Scotty buffs everyone. Okay. Okay, that is true too. That is true too. That's a good point. Uh, I, I will agree. Scotty is up there. She is broken. Uh, but like I said, I wasn't as versed on why because i never really i mean shit y'all can take a look at my my war fighting you know y'all can take a look at my war fighting and she's sitting at only skill one is leveled and her whole purpose in life in my account was to heal surter so i didn't give a fuck about buffs <sighs> i won't fight for mountain will absolutely fight for scotty that's my stance here yeah 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 no 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 scotty scotty yes i i would agree um <clears throat> all right my next character that i feel like would have contention is calcit on release calcit i don't think so i don't think so if y'all think so i'd love to hear some evidence i don't think calcit's up there I already said my piece, Thorns without his second skill activation gets dumpstered. And Mountain gets to work after like three seconds. Yeah, that's assuming that they run straight into him or, you know, onto his tile. Otherwise, they could walk smooth right by him. She was the main source of true damage before Neural. Okay, now StarCraft, I know you remember this. When when we always thought Silver Ash was the was the true damage. And then I don't know if you remember this part, but I was like, yo, because of his skin, he does more damage. And it's totally like the thought process that I have for that. Oh lord. I remember tons of Cal showcase videos. She was like the Ling before Ling was a thing. Super common in low op clears. Talk about scuff, a. Hey. It is what it is, man. With less units in the game, having monster eat a deploy limit wasn't as bad as it is now. So there's also that. <clears throat> Let 
Ling before Ling. All right, now my question to you is, is that we don't even need to look at anybody else because at this point in time, we have our, our people that that Kautzit has to go up, go up against. So are y'all telling me that Kautzit's contribution as a whole character is outdoing the contribution of these people right here on release that's all i'm asking throw counts it to the side and can figure out her oh, okay so you want to say cal sit leave that bitch alone i i i i taking a look at her and i said you know I feel like there's going to be a little bit of contention for Kautzit, so let's go ahead and take her. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Chalter, we don't even need to fucking talk about that. That's ridiculous. That was just stupidly broken. I'm just giving myself some more room. Don't think we even need to talk about Chen. Yeah, no, Chen Alter was ridiculously broken. Off release. If you didn't pull for her, or you weren't here for that, uh, you're missing a sh ridiculously huge chunk of damage. It was ridiculously stupid how broken she is. I might be biased because Scotty counts it. Banner was when I started to get into the game. Yeah. Lamau, I'll never get that character. Oh, dude, I'll not like this, bro. Uh, mm, Neural the Radiant Knight. Neural the Radiant Knight. I know what Yotes is going to say. I need some evidence from someone that ain't him. Because I, I feel like you're super biased on Neuro. Her versatility? Uh, what versatility? Talk to me. She's the classic case that people cite for perfect balance. Super strong but not super broken. I would say her S2 puts her over the top. Now, I ain't gonna bullshit you. I ain't gonna bullshit you. Alright? This entire fucking time of using Neural. I, I typically go for her skill too. Just because... Just because of the way her skill 2 works. I shit you not. I thought her skill 2 was true damage. That shit was fucking hitting. Alright. And then her skill 3. It is actually true damage. That shit was very strong. But here's. Here's my question to y'all. Okay. Here is my question to y'all. Off release. Off release, are you telling me that she is? I, I'm not. I'm, I'm tired of using the the phrase broken or OP. All right, we're, we're not. I'm gonna stop using that, and I'm gonna say that her contribution towards the team or clearing the map. Okay, the team or clearing the map. The contribution I feel like is the better statement here okay are y'all telling me in y'all's opinion neuro's contribution is equal to or greater than everyone right here i'm not saying yes or no i'm just asking y'all because i personally i fuck with her for one specific reason and that's for her skill two the rest of that shit her skill three if i need true damage sure it's kind of hard for me to buy into that hype because I had Surter, I had Mount, uh, excuse me, Mudrock, and then I had Chalter as my top three. You know what I'm saying? As far as the most broken characters. So talk to me about Neuro. What y'all think? <clears throat> Sorry. 
Skill 1, put down and forget. Skill 2, kill something you don't want around without using deploy limit. Skill 3, true damage in my opinion. Skill 2, breaks this. Being able to use that kind of power without using deploy limit is one of the strongest things in this entire game. That's what I use your skill 2 for, I agree. Her skill 2 is what makes her so good at release and so relevant to this day will always be relevant as an oh shit button. She chonks hard stuff. No deployment point needed for her. Says bye after beating the shit out of a boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you max on deploy limit, she's literally the only option and is a damn good option at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even better, pretends to be Rosemontis on skill 3. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so I just want to make sure we're on the same page that y'all are saying y'all are saying that her contribution with her skill 2 and skill 3 is equal or greater than everything that these characters right here have been outputting thus far this y'all are saying yes to that am I am I correct in understanding this I didn't know if y'all could see the chalk right here, so I'll scroll it up. See? So? Hmm. I think her S2 alone would put her there. Her other skills just add to it. Her skill 2 for me, yes. Her skill 3, no. But I say her skill 2 is so unique she gets over to hump. Okay. Oh, neural alter. Now, see, look. <clears throat> I'm gonna be, like I said... I'm, I'm going to just give y'all my quick little nickel and dime. The skill 2 really is the only reason, the main reason, why I will use her. Very recently, I learned that she has to be blocking or her little stationary target dummy true damage sun thing is the thing that needs to be blocking her or that thing in order to activate the true damage. So I've kind of been using her wrong for a little bit. The my my big issue is is that Surtur Mudrock and Chalter felt so much more over like just like a tsunami wave hits me right and just envelops me in total contribution, whereas Neural Alter she's like that secondary after wave of those three that i just mentioned so i get hit with this big ass tsunami wave and then you know it's a secondary wave you know that secondary wave is still big and it still hits but to me that's kind of why i'm iffy about neural alter i'm kind of about it i do agree her skill too and the function in which it works that alone in the contribution is very strong. I don't know if I would put that up against the other three, though. So that's what I'm asking y'all about her. And, uh, can somebody remind me, was she released with her, with her thing, her mod? Was she released with her module? I don't remember. So now we're having to use modules versus everybody in the past. Good lord. I don't remember. I don't know either. I think you can look at the list at the end and make another with Surtur Chalter tier. Mm. I don't remember. No, I think so. If not, it was super close. Gotcha. Okay, I was just curious. I didn't. I don't remember. Flame tail, I no. Gnosis, no. Ling, I don't think we need to talk about that. I think I saw a stat somewhere that said there are only like 12 or less maps in the entire game that she cannot solo. If that's not fucking broken, I don't know what is. And I would... I don't remember if she released with her module or not so someone would have to check that i don't fucking remember but i know 
This bitch is soloing damn near every fucking map in this entire game. She alone is ridiculously broken. I don't think we need to make any arguments. If somebody wants to try to argue that, please feel free. The floor is open. But Ling is the contribution. That's just me. <clears throat> Module is later. Okay, thank you. Thank you. She didn't have mod yet, I think, but even without it, she could solo most things. Her mod took her from broken to why the fuck does this exist? I think, I think the floor has been settled. I, I think that, I think that's more than enough. Now, <clears throat> uh, here's one that Yotes typed out. Uh, and I have it copy pasted in my chat i just didn't hit enter so it's in my little text box but one of them that he he typed out was golden glow i don't believe that on release that she's broken i believe that she has a lot of great things about her in the sense of she's able to do her map wide damage that damage is dependent on RNG if those drones explode or not. I think she's a very solid unit. But comparing her damage to Surter, to Chalter, to Neural Alter, to Ling, these are people, those. Chen, Neural, and Ling are all people relatively recent to what she has to fight against. I'm not even going to mention Surtur, Mudrock, or Thorns. Her contribution is so high that she goes up against these people? I don't know about that. I, I don't really feel that. I would strongly disagree with that. <sighs> Infinite range wasn't something anybody had access to, not to mention the damage she did with it. Uh, is her da- okay. Is her damage that huge if her drones don't explode? Because you know, if you sit there and watch her drones, those motherfuckers, if they don't explode, are just like scratching your back. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> I saw they're doing. And then they explode. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's a lot of fucking damage. All right. I, I do agree with that. But is it really so much in comparison to Chen Alter damage wise, Neural Alter, Ling Surter? I mean, remember, we're not just looking at her alone, we're looking at her compared to everybody else on this list on the left hand side. completely shits on some really hard content like the challenge mode with the drones in chapter 8 she's not unlinked here but it, in the end we're trying to compare to what this new Aya will do right golden glow broke the game way more than she will well now we're we're looking at how is at the very beginning we're saying as the foundation when xyz character released how much contribution are they giving and you know i worded it broken op whatever contribution i feel like is just a better phrase how much contribution are they doing to the team or to clearing the map compared to everybody before them you know that spot behind right we're not going that spot forward that spot and behind
her damage to me isn't quote unquote that huge but it is in the realm of surprising if that makes sense okay i i understand where you're going with that i get pissed at her targeting targeting a lot too but that's just a skill issue a lot of the bruh oh golden glow is hitting a chest a spike chest jesus lee is so good who who Are we counting rolls in SSS and IS-3 too? Because that bumps her up a bit, IMO. If we did that, you'd have to... I mean, then we'd have to just go backwards in time and say, okay, well, now that their mod came out, how do we rate that? Now that this happened and that happened, and there's too many different variables that you'd have to add into. I don't really care about what stage she's on or what this, that, and the third... All I care about is, on release, what's her contribution to any given thing, per se, right? Because then if you start saying, well, oh, if I calculate that she has 13 of these correct collectibles, and then I have 525 um, uh, ingots in, in, in IS-2 or IS-3, then she'll become the greatest... Uh, attack damaging unit in the entire game. I don't give a fuck about that shit. You know what I'm saying? Bruh. I'm just taking her for what she is. Into just whatever fuck it. You know, uh, that's, that's too much complication there. Because then you, it's too many variables. Let's just rock and roll. You know? collectibles i don't care about even without them her range puts her on the absolute top tier of the game i'd say i'm not on team golden glow then but i won't fight hard on that okay so you're saying that it's just because of her range and ability to hit things outside of her own range okay so then, my question would be, they all gotta go to the fucking blue box, regardless. They gonna hit all these dudes before then. Does her range really matter, you know? Throw her to the side, then I guess I think we'll have this argument later. I think that would be good. Gold thing. Whoa. Team Nami, let's go. Mizuki broken as well. Is your Mizuki even E2? Sir? A lot of things she ranges would kill your normal range unit if they got close enough, so you know. We are gonna have that discussion later, cause... Okay. I don't even have Mizuki jokes on you, damn. My Mizuki is M6 mod 2. Is that good enough? No. Gotta be mod 3. Sorry. Next. <laughs> I honestly didn't even know Mizuki had a mod. If I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I think this way is good though. Uh, So you said the next one was Pazemka. <sighs> Alright. Looking from Fiametta to Dorothy. Fiametta to Dorothy. Off release, I don't think any of these are so game-breakingly incredible. If anybody wants to make a case for Fiametta, Horn, Irene, Spectre, Alter, Lumen, Ebon Holes, or Dorothy, please do so now. Otherwise, I am moving on. <clears throat> the units on the left are non-negotiable. The ones on the right will be compared. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. That's good. That's good. Yeah, that's a good way to put that. And I'll, I'll move them over one more tab. Put it like that. 
I'm gonna give y'all some time to type just in case y'all are typing. Horton could start a dialogue, but when you compare her to shit like Chalter Ling, it's kind of moot. The one thing Horn has over them is being on melee tiles. She can hit certain enemies that weren't meant to be hit. By that case, Golden Glow. Map wide. You know what I mean? But I kind of do agree with what Dudo said. I do agree. But when you compare... And th this, is, this is what I have been trying to say for everyone before, right? When you compare them to shit like Chen Alter and Ling is this XYZ person contribution really that much compared to people like those two characters that's just me though <clears throat> which is why I gave it a maybe I won't fight for her too hard just wanted to make sure we took it into yeah yeah I agree I agree that's why I said you know the the floor is open for any of those characters that were kind of like, yo, what's the business? Uh, but I, I think I think enough time has passed that from Fiametta, Horn, Irene, Spectre, Alter, Lumen, Eben Holes, and Dorothy, we're going to close the case on them. Their contribution is not high enough on release. We're going to continue. Uh, Gaviel Alter, I don't really think so. You know, personally, I don't think so. I am not a big Gavial Alter user, but I have, I, I've also not just seen so many videos or so many people being like, oh, oh Gavial Alter, oh, she's so broken. I haven't really seen that, so I'm going to skip that. Uh, unless somebody has a case. I think Pazemka is free, left side free even. <laughs> Pazemka. I before look, I'm putting her there. I would like to hear evidence. I would like to hear the case. I would like to hear the case why Pazemka is a free left side. You guys are delusional. She is just a better Schwarz. Ooh, yo, StarCraft. Out here. Out here. People overlooked her because she wasn't limited. So what you're telling me is if Pazemka was the limited and then Gavia Alter was the non-limited, that people would be going crazy about her. Uh. Excuse me. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> I like that. I like that phrase. Tell, tell me how you really feel. What's good? What's good? That's another thing. What's good, G? <clears throat> it's almost like Schwarz was already a really good unit. Improving upon a good unit equals question mark. Yeah, Posey is like having two of Schwarz. One of which can't be hit. Exactly, that typewriter is what makes her extra. So, Starcraft, I feel like you're saying that Pazemka is overrated. So, the question is, would Schwarz with typewriter put her on the list? That is a very good question. That is actually such a good question. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> if Schwarz had a typewriter, we would never ever use Rosa or Exu for anything. <laughs> Call me smoke, but that's what I think. I, I'm not going to call that smoke. 
I'm a, look, I, I'm gonna be honest with y'all though. I do need to stand up because, good Lord, have mercy. The old belly is uh has increased in size after them nachos. Lord, help me. Now look, if y'all just want it, look here, we go like this. Yeah, buddy, what's going on? <laughs> hey, what's going on, partner? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> hey, you know this this ain't too bad. I'll just stand up like this. Yeah. All right, so look. I don't think that that's a smoke take. I don't think that's a smoke take at all. I think she just gets overlooked and is absolutely deserving of the rating that people who know give her. Hmm. So look, <clears throat> let me let me ask it in the terms of what Doodle said earlier. If you had to compare Pazemka to people like Ling, Chen Alter, and anyone else on this list, you really think that Pazemka is going to contribute the same, if not more, than the other people? That's remember, that's the statement that we're going after. Not how good is Pozemka or how strong she is, because she's good, she's strong, but is her contribution really that high? No, I don't think she's in Ling tier, but I think she's absolutely on a different level compared to the bar here. But see, that's don't forget, that's the thing. Now that Ling has come out, we have stepped into the Ling territory. How broken are you actually going to be? Throw Pazemka on the right side. Ooh. Ooh. That's a very interesting point. That's... Mmm. Because, see, now... How fair is it to go from here on out and just say, oh, because this one character exists, we can't compare true brokenness or true contribution because of this one character just breaks the scale. Eh, I mean, we still kind of can. Hard disagree, too much versatility and hard damage. Ling is an anomaly anyways. Yeah, hard damage as long as the bosses within the typewriter and Pazemka is... Oh, wait. Hard damage as long as the bosses within the typewriter and Pazemka is a way not getting slapped. That's okay. Same shit as... Ooh, okay. This tier list needs its own tier list for Ling and Chalter. Keep it in the lane. Mmm, you got a good point. You got a good point. Not exactly hard when typewriter can be hit. I don't think he's talking about typewriter getting hit or not. It's about, is it within the range of using its maximum potential? Now look, <clears throat> y'all got some good cases. Starcraft, you kind of got some good cases here. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna lie to you. I will say... Yelts if the boss moves away from typewriter, what the fuck is it gonna hit? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of true. I will say, <clears throat> personally, on release, I don't really feel like Pazemka was that absolute contributing monster. I feel like she did a great amount of damage she had some good versatility but now if we want to talk about versatility what about neural alter what about her ability to not even take up a deployment limit even if you're at max you can still drop her right what about the contribution levels of chen alter's damage 
right? What about Lee? You know, I, those characters exist. That's what makes this whole thing difficult. Anomaly or not, every, I mean, not every, but I mean, we, there, every era has an Einstein. Every era has a whomever. Our current era is Ling. That is our Einstein. And people still compare and contrast to Einstein. So we still have to use Ling as our comparison. So that's honestly, I would kind of put her right here. I don't think she's over here, but I, I, it's kind of hard for me to say she's a hard left. Personally, I'm thinking she's like kind of, uh, you know. Think about Chen's wide range compared to the one lane typewriter. That is true too. Posey isn't on Chen Ling tier, but she's great. <clears throat> they definitely didn't make maps that really cater to her till later, it feels like. Posey is right side to me. Ooh. And in the end, the bar for this will be the new Aya, which I think Posey's release outclasses. Well, we're going to see. We're going to see. If you make a middle tier, we have to add that to the right side debate. Right side debate it is. Because I would have said middle tier. Mid tier. Oh. Let me go back to... Alright. Okay. <clears throat> so see, this is why... I asked for evidence for cases to be made because we went from is a hard easy left to now she is a middle tier and we got a debate about her later. That is why I asked for evidence because I honestly did not feel like Pazemka was as strong as what we have to compare her to. That makes it interesting. <sighs> I think we can skip both Muenor in Texas. We can skip Texas. I need to debate Mwenar. Mjolnir. Uh, Y'all gonna have to talk about him. Because this man doesn't do normal, uh, doesn't do auto attacks, like your normal attacks. He doesn't block. When he is attacking, he only blocks one. He has a very big AoE, or a very big range. But is... Are his what's the word that I want that I want to use? Are his negatives not that bad in comparison to his positives? Are his positives so strong and so good that his negatives don't matter? And on top of that, I don't have Mwenar. I don't ever really use him because uh, I, I don't really like using support units. So for those that got him and for those that use him a lot, y'all go ahead to tell me Chen Alter, Ling, Neural Alter, Surter. I don't know. I truly don't know because I don't have the motherfucker. Right? So I'm going to need some help. What y'all think? <clears throat> Remember, contribution on release. I don't even know if he has a module. I'm going to be honest with you. Somebody let me know that too. <sighs> Muenar is an easy include for me. So as a new player who got Munar, I've never been carried as hard as I have by a single pull in a gacha game ever. And by the time he released Ark Knight's favorite of meta... Oh, hold on. By the time he released Ark Knight's quote-unquote favored a meta that characters with birth burst windows enjoy because of boss phase. Mm. I see. You know, that statement right there, I kind of agree with, because if you look at it 
Thorin's kind of falls off much later. Kautzit kind of falls off much later. Because of... They are consistent damages. You see what I'm saying? But I, I kind of do agree, and I kind of do see what you're talking about with the... The burst windows. That's a good point. <sighs> his positives are so strong you don't care about his negatives. He isn't in the anomaly tier, but he's still better than the rest. No module, current power is the same as... Oh, wow, I didn't know that. He's a Garden Knight, so he's plus one kick. Game has really been designed around opposite DPS windows like Winon. I see. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I didn't know. I would. I thought his negatives could have put him over to the discussion side. But uh, we're just going to call him Mjolnir. We don't even need to talk about Texas Altar. Uh, and if you feel like we need to, to, to talk about Texas Alter, I mean, shit, I'll take the stage and I'll, I'll present a case. But I mean, if you just take a look at what Texas Alter can do, I don't really think she's going to need a, uh, <laughs> I don't think she's going to need a case. But I, you know. <laughs> oh, good Lord. <laughs> but doodle i will say that was a very strong case a very good case i appreciate it thank you sir thank you the next ops after are the most interesting to me la penance uh yeah so vigil doesn't exist uh he's not even really a character so we'll just go on to the next one Question mark vigils OP, you're cute. <laughs> Do ops like Yato Alter, Mumu, Typhon have an argument? Mm. Damn, we're already skipping that far. Uh Reed Alter, I don't think is incredibly busted. Lin isn't that busted. Chong Yue is cool, but that's biased. He's not that busted. Kubai isn't really that busted. Yato Alter. If you've seen any videos about Yato Alter, she's basically Texas Alter. Like, fucking sister. IDK about the ops that we haven't tried? Yeah, I agree. I can throw Typhon in without having use. <laughs> Yo, actually, though, Typhon's so broken, dude. Uh, I'm going to do it like this, based on videos, because we are NA players. Typhon looks so busted because boss tracking even though phase change, yeah. Throw Mumu on the right side, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Uh... Mumu not out in global yet. Not out in global. <clears throat> I think the main argument for and against Mumu is that she scales with your account. Her summon mimics an op you already have, I see. So what about the statement earlier that you weren't supposed to say busted anymore per your own mouth? Ye own mouth? Oh, okay. Texas and Yato's contributions towards being able to clear multiple given maps are comparable to those only high on the list. Not as high as Anomaly 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 tier but 
are definitely extremely high compared to the rest of the group. Uh, as previously mentioned, their contributions in forms of mass clearing, AoE, stunning, and just overall extremely high DPS in small bursts and in, uh, excuse me, in small burst windows, like we had mentioned before, that burst windows are the favored playstyle is the reason why Texas and Yato Alters <laughs> are very easily uh, on this list. Mans is wording to hit the minimum on the essay. Yo, dude, hey, if you gonna come in here and try and, and you know, call me out, or, you know, you gonna question, you know, hey, I'm gonna make sure that I present to you. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> if Monar was the most single game-changing pull I've ever made in a gotcha, Texas Alter is a given second. Well, damn. And that's coming from Doodle, who's on a very new account. Uh, not very new. Uh, started earlier in 2023, but still very, very heavy statement. Now, uh, my question, are we not going to look at people like Kubai, who hasn't come out? Inus, who hasn't come out? Ho-Oh, who hasn't come out? We not going to look at them? Or... Or are we just kind of like, we've seen videos and they're not that great? What are y'all's, uh... To be fair, that also means he didn't get to use the launch shirt or chin, though. That's true. That is very true. Cubayan, Inus, Enus, whatever, aren't there. Good units, not top 1%. Okay. Did they get nerfed? Uh, it's not that they got nerfed. It's that... It's like... Uh, let me put it to you like this. Let me put it to you like this. When something game changing happens, happens, you know, you kind of, I would kind of almost compare it to something like, you know, when that thing happened, when that big monumental thing happened, you kind of remember where you are when you heard the news about it or when, when that shit happened. Right. So <sighs> it's one of them things that you kind of had to be there. That shit was just so broken, it was legendary, right? You didn't see that type of damage produced at that point in time. There wasn't no, you know, craziness happening. They were the craziness. They were the first wave of incredible damage uh, in ways that we ain't seen before. And now, because we've been here for so long, I would almost argue that you're kind of numb to seeing something that crazy because you're so used to it because nowadays you say oh well look at Surtur look at Chen Alter look at Ling look at Texas look at blah 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 right back then when Surtur came out it was holy shit look at Surtur this is fucking crazy I need to pull for her there was nothing else said after that right if a new player were to come out now you would say, oh, damn, well, if I can get someone like Surtur or Ling or Chen Alter or blah, 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 then you, okay, cool, you have so many broken, you know, high contribution. <clears throat> uh. They're still great, but the units up there with them now weren't there. Yeah, yeah. I think it speaks volumes of the impact the character has, though that you can ignore quite a few others considered quote-unquote broken. Yep, yep. Are you saying I'm a fucking Ark Knight Zoomer? <laughs> hey, you little whippersnapper. Hey, 
right now you looking like you about knee top that bit knee high to a grasshopper. Lord help me. Yeah, I guess I could say that about you. <clears throat> Alright, so we've only seen this in videos. And even then, not really that many. I do want to bring the case of Silence Alta. She basically can give you invulnerability. I don't really know much about her. Is she a right side? Is she a not even on the list? Because she's a free unit that everybody gets at P6. What are we thinking about? I just want to bring her to the attention because that is a type of mechanic that we have not seen uh, that a healer can do. So I'm just asking to throw it into the void and, you know, kind of see what y'all say. Silence has a single niche, which is good, but no, not even close. Not on the list because Conjurer, I fear. I don't even know what the fuck that means. I know it's an archetype. I don't know anything about it. She's not awful or anything, but not on this tier of power. Gotcha. If you want to make a Silence Altar argument, you have to add Massimo or Blem for their niche as well. Okay. Okay. Understood. Uh, Executor Altar. Anything there for him? Uh, the videos that I've seen of him. Gonna be honest with you. Don't think he's that amazing. Those are just videos that I'm watching on. <laughs> I mean, his self-sustain. I guess you could kind of potentially argue. But... I, 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 I don't know how to, to to rate him, per se. I'm unsure on him as well, but don't think he quite makes it. <clears throat> I mean, he's basically the melee version of Chen Alter, who heals himself in trades of damage compared to Chen Alter, right? So Chen Alter has more damage over here, and then you got going backwards would be Executor Alter who can heal himself but does less damage. Maybe that's kind of what I'm getting. I don't know. Who are we talking about? I'm just making a case for Executor Alter before we go on. <laughs> just want to make sure. Haven't seen him do anything that gave me the same reaction as seeing Typhon use her skill on Patriot. Gotcha. Yo, Jacebreaker, what's up, man? We're just talking about units based on their release how much contribution they have given and compared to their former comrades and seeing are they that much better or not basically i'm trying to make a point yeah we've been at this for like an hour and a half and we took it way too far, so normal stuff. Hey, if you don't think that this ain't going on YouTube, let me tell you something, my boy. Because this is a damn good... <laughs> this is a damn good topic, man. Hey, she... She... <clears throat> Executor Alter. Alright, we ain't got shit for him. Typhon. Look. T-Y-P-H-O-N. Is this six stars or lower rarities? Up for the discussion as well. Uh, <laughs> who? <laughs> who? <laughs> Yo, that, that's pretty fucking funny. Oh god, that that's cute. That's cute, doodle. That's cute. I appreciate the question, and I understand that's a valid question. Uh, I'm not making fun of you. Uh, I just thought that was funny because, shit, I just thought it was, I thought it was funny. On a serious note, no. Five stars and below don't, I don't, no. They don't have a third skill. Their contribution is <clears throat> far. Okay, let me ask you this. For the people that are not on this list, do you really think a five star or below is going to out-contribute someone else that ain't on this list that's how i would word that you see what i'm saying and no not merle don't try lamel 
Can't wait to say for Typhon and say and Swire Alter Banners Copium. You're, what is this? A dash cam type desktop four x three webcam? No, this is the same webcam size. The only thing is, is that I'm standing up. I'm standing up instead of sitting in the chair. That's all it is. I just wanted to stand up, so I pointed the camera upwards. <clears throat> Because I was going to die on that Cantabile hill. I see, I see. Waifu, I can't hate on you. Landsat 2 is a deployment, no deployment. Uh, excuse me, Landsat 2 is a robot, no deployment, and heals. <sighs> Boy, I bet I could tickle your nutsack and heal you more than Landsat does. Get that shit out my face. <clears throat> Huh? <laughs> Keep this on record. Wow. Look, man. Was I wrong, though? It ain't like that, though. Look, hey. What I tell y'all, I tell y'all this all the time. Two facts of life. $20 is $20, and I ain't gay. Two facts of life. <clears throat> I think the only one we can even start to make an argument for is Myrtle, but that that's because of Bagpipes' existence. I mean, if you said Myrtle, then you'd probably have to say Salich, and Salich isn't even that impactful. But I mean, that's just going to start a whole motherfucking thing, so it's not even... Okay, so... <laughs> I don't even give a fuck about Swire at this point. We have finally reached the point at which... We are here to talk about, and I actually feel a little more, oh, I feel, uh, feel a little bit better, so I'd like to sit down now. Now we got to figure out how Aya fits into this. <laughs> exactly. Swire's cool, but she doesn't quite fit in. Yeah, I agree. All right. So now that we know, kind of... Is this everybody? How can I get this? Okay, there we go. Now that we know who is on our list of the highest contributing characters, all right? Six star wise, the highest contrib contributing characters, whether it be damage, whether it be an anomaly, whether it be the addition of that character to your team to help clear a map. All right. Actually, the biggest thing Aya has going on for her is elemental damage heal even on unhealable summons. Really? You think that's the only fucking thing? That's crazy. Uh, before we talk about Aya, I need to go back to the beginning. I need to go back to the beginning for one character. Alright. And that's Nightingale. On release, her E2 gave you the little birdcage. She had... She was one of, if not the only character to give you uh, arts resistance. I almost said magic resistance. Could be the same thing. Magic resistance. Arts resistance. She was an AoE healer, and for her time, she has aged phenomenally well comparing to everything else. What are the thoughts on Nightingale being a, an extremely high contributor on release? Because, again, she released with the game, so you're not having to compare her with that many people, but we also did it for Aya. And I've completely forgot about Nightingale.
Wait for actual content and not hyper scuff showcase. That's true. That's the only thing I want from her too. I'm not saying the only. I said it's the biggest. I see. Nightingale? Nightingale is the best aging unit in the entire game. I completely agree with that statement. Hold on one second. <laughs> As enemies got more threatening, Nightingale got better. Okay, so question. It's not that she wasn't good or bad. It's not that she wasn't good or bad. It's just that there were no enemies to actually push Nightingale to her limit. That's more of what it sounds like. That's more of what it sounds like. Was Silence out on release? I forget. Yes. She was Juice. There was this ticket that you could choose a five-star character to just obtain for free, and she was one of them, uh, if I remember correctly. Was Silence... Uh, because she has to... Wait, what? She has to fight that as well, if so. Silence of Drone was great back then. She definitely had a place in that discussion. The game were, the game wasn't ready for Nightingale's uses yet. Yes. Which still makes her not as usable as someone like Aya. Hold on. Oh, hold on. People just didn't realize how strong her Esther was until the CS event and meeting Tallulah for the first time. Okay, so my question is... <sighs> All right. I'm going to take what you just told me, <clears throat> all right? The game was not ready for Nightingale's uses yet. Is that not an anomaly tier? There's, there is, you're not, you are so good that we can't even have, we can't even use your potential because they're just shitter mobs compared to what you can do. Is that is that not close to what is being said there? Is that not close to what's being said there? Because until mobs come out that are even difficult enough to Say, hey, we need to call in the big guns. Get me a Nightingale in here pronto. You see what I'm saying? That's why we're using people like Telopsis. That's why we're using people like Silence. That's why we're using people like fill in the blank. Because we didn't have that need for him. I do agree with the statement. She is the best aging character in this entire game. <clears throat> the question is... Would you consider her an extremely high contribution, but she could not contribute because the mobs that she were, was facing at that point in time didn't even require her to do anything? Someone like Tilopsis actually brought more to the team than Nightingale. Only once her kit started to work was she at the top tier of the game. Okay. So now you're... Okay, so based on that statement... Based on that statement... It wasn't until the game devs gave something that needed Nightingale to pop off. Then she was able to pop off. Had she actually been released later... She would have been on this tier. Or on this list. But because she was released at the beginning of the game when art shit wasn't even a fucking thing, she is not on this list. That's what I'm understanding. 
it's the difference between a hypothetical and an actualization. Even then, all the content that she's great on, you can do without her. There's low rarity guide specific clearing without Nightingale for every stage. We realize, or we use Telopsis. We use Telopsis till we realize she can't heal your entire team. Damn. You could argue like five better healers in the game on launch day. I think that actually, excuse me, that automatically disqualifies her regardless of the reason. I see. You can say the same thing for every six star. If you put them, then we can clear stuff with low rarity. That is true. Yes, Nightingale is super weird like that. You're completely right. She's a weird case, but not on the list. I'm a okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay. So that's actually very important because I, I wanted to make sure that that Nightingale was given her, her time to shine, right? She wasn't good on release. When she came out, nothing was there for her kit to be used for. If she came out later, she'd be on the list. But did she age extremely well? She aged like a fine wine. All right, so that's cool. She did amazing in aging. That's wonderful. Now here's where we get back to this. <sighs> Aya. 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 I'm going to be doing that for a long time until we get her. And probably until after we get her, too. Here's why I would make an argument that Aya Alter is on this list. We're fighting against dudes that do fire damage or what, whatever that shit is called. Elemental or status, whichever one it is. We're fighting against dudes that do that right now. All right. If we're going to put Golden Glow on the right side where we have to talk about her or we have cases to build for her in arguments of it because of her map wide shit well guess what Aya has map wide healing that ain't seen by anybody else and if we're also going to put neural alter here because of the different dynamic of contributions that she brings to the team by being able to drop down with no uh no deployment limit taken this whole map-wide global healing, and I'm not talking about no passive of 3.5% of whatever stat. I'm talking about you gonna get waterfalled from the windows of heaven, and you gonna go like you drinking from the fountain of youth type healing, all right? Not only to your normal health bar, but also to the other health bar with the fire shit status, whatever the fuck, okay? That type of contribution alone, we have seen in videos that we've watched, of course, right? This isn't anything that any of us have tried because we're on global. We've seen that she is solo healing this shit. Things that would take typically two, maybe three healers, she's solo healing. That is the type of contribution that makes the list in my opinion in my opinion <clears throat> it's insane to think about it, it about it but it is what it is talking about nightingale yeah i agree aya is releasing at a great time actually uh hypergriff is having a field day thrown elemental on every goddamn unit every goddamn event see that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying if they released her with chapter 8, specifically when Tallulah, then her case would be a lot stronger. Agreed with Trilby. Mm. <laughs> I get that you want to defend her, but let's keep this fair. Oh, okay, well, okay. Well, see, look, I, you know, early on, I would ask y'all for, for y'all's cases, right? And then I would say some shit afterwards. I'm giving you my case first. All right, you see what I'm saying? I'm giving you my case first, and then y'all come at it after that. That's... That's the type that I want to take. Because, hey, hey, uh. Global burst heal and healing sanity for mudrock type, sure. Then again, being a pure healer in AK sucks. 
or excuse me, being a pure healer sucks in AK. Hmm. Hmm. She's unique for sure, but her skill three would make for some interesting setups. Uh, interesting setups in the future. You went after all those units at once. I think comparing her directly is better. Directly to what? Fair enough. This whole exercise has basically been to let you make your case. I don't even know at this point. Honestly, I'm gonna be real with you, Trilby. At this point, we just talk about units, and I'm just having a good ass time with it. You know what I'm saying? Quite frankly, at the end of the day, each person is gonna have their own opinion. And I'm just here to just talk and just listen to y'all's opinions and just make cases for both ways. This shit is interesting and fun as fuck to me. And at the end of the day, regardless of what anybody says, each person is going to think whatever character is broken in their own right. Or has a high contribution level in their own right. At the end of the day, I'd be fucking chilling. Tug has been saying, let me cook this whole time. Bro, I've been saying, let me cook for A, a little A. I've been, hey, y'all have been cooking for all these motherfuckers. Hey, I'm out here cooking for Aya Alter, man. Shit. <laughs> As in one comparison at a time, instead of saying she does more than XX and, oh, okay, oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. For fun dis discussion, I mean, it's not really for fun. We are making extremely valid cases for these characters, and we're trying to keep it as put together as possible, right? We're not just throwing everything to the wind so you know hi kitty what are your thoughts on af yellow altar she doesn't play the game she'll be what case he's guilty of all time wow you are scuffed dude he is crooking uh, dude, how long have you waited to use that starcraft i know you've been waiting for a long ass time i know you've been waiting at the end of the day you'll throw 300 rolls for her a and W. Wait, what's A and W? Anyway, huh? Bro, just oh my god, you young whippersnappers! I can't keep up with you. All right, so go ahead, <clears throat> go ahead, y'all. Give me y'all's case. Give me y'all's case. Wait, yeah, who types that? That's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm... I saw A&W, and I was like, I don't even know what the fuck this man typed. And then old Zoomer Doodle over here. I'm not winning any... <laughs> Yo! That's actually what I was thinking. Jesus. <laughs> I'm not winning the Ark Knights Zoomer allegations now, ever. I swear to God, dude. That's exactly what I thought, bro. Oh, not really. Just need to be here for too long, bro. All right, so go ahead. Tell, all right. Well, not go ahead, but... the Let the people step on up. Y'all step on up. Why or why not is Aya on this slot? Regardless of what I have to say. Give me your own cases. Use your own brain. Use your own opinion. Let me hear it. You just did that to yourself, but it was fucking fun. It really was fun. Just wanted to say hi. I'm going to attempt to go back to bed. Okie dokie. Thank you for coming by. I hope you feel better. I saw the post earlier. I'm glad to hear that everything came back negative. I'm going to give y'all some time to type because I'm pretty sure y'all got y'all out here. on them uh on them keyboards i know y'all y'all's typing up a storm man but i had to read 37 different theses getting better every day that's good i'm glad to hear that good night good night good night <sighs> my gut instinct on global healing being contested with perfumer and angelina is from final fantasy xiv 14 where we don't care how much you actually heal as long as you prevent death. A question I can't answer is if Aya Alter heals too much. Now, see, that's it. Okay. So, here is an interesting thing that I've seen. Okay. 
based on the videos that I've watched. And I, I, I completely understand where you're coming from because when we heart, when I used the parsing instruments, it would show me how much I'm overhealing or how much I'm not overhealing, right? So overhealing is a very bad thing to do. In Aya's skill, when it shoots down the beam of light, it won't shoot down 30 beams of light on one character and overheal the fuck out of them. I've seen it just shoot down one or two or three on one character that needs the healing and then be done. So I feel like it's almost a quote unquote smart heal in the sense of it's not going to blast everything on that character and overheal them to hell and back, right? I guess in this case to heaven and back, right? From what I'm just looking at on videos, I don't have the character. That's the type of healing that it looks like compared to overhealing. She'll sit there, heal one, two, three, and then maybe herself is four, and then she'll just sit and wait until somebody else needs to take damage. And then that somebody will take damage, and then her global heal will pop. That's the type of heal that is it looks like. Based on videos alone, I don't have the obviously I don't have the fucking character. A lot of the units we consider great also already have self-sustained, so there is that. Uh Typhon doesn't have it, Yato doesn't have it, Texer Texer. Texas a quarter of the way has it. A burst heal, I don't think I would say is self-sustain. That's kind of like saying burst damage to consistent damage. Mjolnir doesn't have a heal, Ling doesn't have a heal, Neural doesn't, Chalter doesn't, Scotty's a healer, Mudrock does, Surter does not, Thorns does. So like two and a half, three people. <sighs> Yato and Texas have 20 second timers, that's their system. If you don't get your scuff ass out of here, boy. Ling is a summoner, so that shit don't count either. Yeah, I agree. She'd be great at keeping Surter alive forever. That's something that I'd actually really love to see, is how she would handle healing Surter compared to other healers. The rest are fair, though. Yeah, Scotty Alter, Mudrock, and Thorns. Nobody else has self-sustain. Oh my... Bro, that scared the shit out of me, dog. Holy fuck. Oh, Jesus. Mountain, Calcid is a healer herself. Oh, I was taking just for sure people. I wasn't taking anybody on the right-hand side. Oh, my goodness. Eternal Junction, dude. <laughs> Thanks for the follow, man. Appreciate it. Welcome, man. Yo, yo, yo. <clears throat> Strongest thing for her is healing elemental. But a lot of the great units can kill shit that would do elemental damage to them anyways. Haven't been jump scared that bad since release phasmophobia. Bro, I'm telling you, man. When I'm in the zone of like gaming or talking or whatever, and then a notification pops up, dude, that shit legitimately scares the shit out of me. Like, especially the subscriber one because it's so loud. I'll be gaming and then that shit will come out of nowhere and I'm like, what the fuck just that? And I'm like, oh my god. Bro, that Jesus, man. What a time to get a follow. Eternal Junction, thank you, man. <clears throat> Not to mention the entire Reaper class who aren't on here but are pretty good. So as far as overhealing, just I feel like it's safe to say I don't believe she does. And on top of that portion, she does have that small heal over time that it's like she'll hit you. Let's just, let's say she'll get you like 95% and then that last 5% will just be her small heal over time tick. That's a skill, by the way. Are you serious? That's a juiced ass fucking skill then. Why is it not uh Okay buddy. There we go.
Normal healing causes the target to be additionally healed once per second, with a buff healing equal to 10% of the healing amount. I'm pretty sure that's what her, her talent is. <clears throat> yeah, so she's giving you a heal over time on any heal that she does. She also increases max HP. Neat. Yeah, I think it's 6%. That was what the title of a video was. Was 6%. And elemental damage received is reduced by 12%. So that's pretty good, too. Are there any other cases as to why she should not be on this list? Or why she should be? Because, I mean, she, hey, you know, your boy got the, the ovens ready. The ingredients are prepared. I'm ready to throw this motherfucker on the grill. I mean, shit, y'all know how I feel about this motherfucker. Argument isn't if she's on the list. You ain't cooking anything, you crook. Man, Mr. Mister Scuffcraft. I'm trying to see if she's better than some of these people. One of the things... <clears throat> okay. This was a while back. I don't remember who said it. Somebody said when she comes out, her global healing will allow us to try different things, to do things we haven't been able to do yet based off of just how the the range is for healing. Scotty Alter also allows us to do things that we couldn't do before. She buffs people that if they had a buff, would be pump jump jump up a little bit on their level scale, right? Aya, with enough creativity and enough I can't think of the word that I'm looking for. With enough I'm just gonna say creativity for Thinking outside of the box in terms of not playing normally, she will open up different kinds of strategies that are not normally, that you are not normally capable of. So in terms of to Scotty Alter, that is, that's one case that I would say as to why. Okay. A heal over time while also healing... Uh, the elemental damage part is another thing that I would say is a strong case for. Okay. <clears throat> In the end, she's bringing... Is, oh, all she's bringing is the healing that won't end any stages on its own. I agree with her opening more strats, but that does need to be thrown in there as well. Uh, Scotty brings more attack to your attackers, for example. Okay. Based on what was said earlier, if Nightingale <clears throat> came out at a different time, at a later time, when we noticed that arts, res arts resistance was starting to become more needed, she would be on this list. You said earlier, Hypergriff is shitting out elemental damage left and right with every event. So, this is... I feel like... Aya is coming out at the perfect time... That Nightingale should have came out earlier on, right? If Nightingale came out when we needed Arts Resistance, she'd be on this list. Aya is coming out when we can use elemental damage healing... To actually prevent them from dying. She can heal multiple folks... So why isn't she making the list? 
she the the same scenario that would be built for nightingale that would put nightingale on this list is made right now for aya but she's not on this list why that's my question that's the question that i would think of scotty out there bringing attack defense and regen is what's so strong just healing doesn't open as many strats in that sense That's where I question that. Because at what point are we just labeling it just healing? Oh, she's just healing, but I'm actually able to set my character in Timbuktu, Narnia, and fucking Zimbabwe. And still clear the entire map. Is that really just healing? Or is that the intuitiveness, the creativity that we haven't been exposed to yet that's allowing Aya to shine even more so compared to what we are what the norm is what we're used to right put your healer in range of or put your damage character in range of your healer so that way they can they won't die bitch Aya don't give a fuck she said, bitch, I don't even need to see your ass. I still heal you. What's up? You know, that's the type. That's the kind of creativity that I'm trying to say. Why would that not put her there? What's up, Cruel? I agree that this is the great time for Aya, but she still does have that issue of only healing. And like I said, she's somewhere on the list. She's not ha sure how many she's better than. Nightingale only heals. But earlier we said that she would make this list if she came out at a later time. That's the next point of contention. You see, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to convince y'all of I need you to think what I think or I need to think what you think. I'm trying to push the limits of your own opinion of what this list should include or should not include because at the end of the day she's already on this list for me i don't need to question it i'm just writing down what all we have said as a chat right we've said on the stream because if it's up to me this bitch is already there but i'm trying to not make it just completely biased and my own list if i wanted to make my own list i could make that shit on my own off time call it a fucking day and at the end of the day, again, talking about art nights at the end of the night is what's fucking fun. That's just me. Nightingale is an exception to the game's rule of units getting outclassed over time. Even with Aya existing, Nightingale still has a place. Res is insane. Basically, I wanted to prove a point that Tug is overrating Aya. You are so fucking scuffed. I had him bring up units that were strong on release and am now comparing. Okay. <clears throat> so, okay. Here, here's something. Let's fucking go, Yotes. This man... Order in the court. Order in the court. Get this scuff man out my... What is it called? What's the room called? Where they're in the court? Out of, out of my courtroom? That doesn't really sound right. Is it a courtroom? I don't know. Why are you acting like a judge? Because why are you acting scuff? Answer me that. <laughs> Yotes professional hater. Here's one of the things about Yotes that I, I actually enjoy is he does push me to 
think about things that I have not ever had to think about. He brings to light a lot of very stimulating intellectual like things about the game and it's very fun so while it may look like i'm defending myself or i'm arguing against yotes at least for me to him like from my point of view this is fun as fuck and this is actually very stimulating and very enjoyable so i don't know to be fair i'm more hating on aya than streamer here unfortunately don't want to be but it is what it is this motherfucker that's the yotes that i know that's the real hater grind set though a real hater proves points to hate on oh does he i don't even i don't i honestly don't even really know how that shit works that's a really nice way to say he's a hater actually that's low-key a burn to all of y'all but I'm not going to get into that. Y'all ain't ready for that discussion. Ooh. He's been trying to take down Yotes since last year. I like to think of it as a slow and steady process. <clears throat> and also, if you can't see how that's a burn to the rest of y'all, that kind of proves my point even more. I'll let y'all think on that one. I think that one's a little too advanced. I'm curious if Yotes would understand what I just said. I got called an Arknight Zoomer. I don't think I can feel the burn anymore. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And you know what's funny? Is you brought that on yourself. My original thing, by the way, was that Medic Aya isn't a top 10 release for context. If you want to join in, cool. Well, first off, we need to see if she even makes it on here. Secondly, we would have to tear this entire thing off to say who was the most impactful per release and then say, is she in the top 10 in all those? So if we want to get back to your original point, we'd have to go through those steps as well. I've not been keeping up with new units, so I'm sitting this out. Also, only care about waifus. You're... Oh, wait, cruel. Dude, yo, that'd be cool as fuck. What if I did an account review for Cruel? That'd be interesting. I'm curious to see. Or do you not really play every day, Cruel? Don't need to order the entire thing. Just compare Aya to them. Just put her on the list to be easy, then rank the top 10. I don't think she makes it, unfortunately. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then let's just say Aya Alter was here. So that put 13. We're not going to count the ones that we have to fucking argue on. Talk about whatever. I take breaks so my account is all over the place. Ah, I see. Hang on. What are we hanging on for? Oh, wait, what? My honest opinion is that I can't judge until I use a altar for myself because healing seems... Because healing seems so much more subjective than DPS and Arknights. <sighs> and this is why I really want a damage chart like the way that Nikkei does at the end of the game, at the end of each stage, so that if I want to check it, I can check it. Because what's very really interesting is that when I was doing the stages for the event, when I was just fucking around and finding out on this stage right here, I actually found out that putting Chong Yue here was really bad. Then I put him here and his DPS increased. And then I put him on this tile and his DPS increased even more so. So now that's like saying, I'm trying to have to figure this shit out without the fucking charts, right? Like where are the optimal spots for me to do damage? Is basically what I'm trying to fucking figure out. Just having damage... And healing info would add more playability. Exactly. That is something I completely agree with. Golden Glow and Posey merit comparison to IMO. Because are we going to say this new medic does more to the game than Golden Glow did? I feel like that's a statement. IMO, she will just out heal elemental. So to the bench go the berries. Well, here's the thing. 
to the bench go the berries and to the bench go a lot of other healers because her burst heal is so fucking strong that it's not just the elemental damage that she's burst healing she's burst healing their normal health bars and on top of that she's doing that map wide for almost every character that is why i'm saying she's on that list You know, people would redo runs just to max stats for favorite op. Oh, wait, are you... See oh, yeah, 100%, dude. I'd be one of those people. That shit would be fun as fuck. Telopsis is probably gone as well. 100%. I think Nightingale lives, though, because Rez is absolutely beyond broken. I agree. Does that map-wide heal characters like Mudrock? So her skill 2 puts a small little barrier on them. Or whatever fucking skill it is. It puts a barrier on them. So that would enable time for Mudrock to get her shield back up and then heal herself. So in theory, low key, yeah. S2, you hit the wrong thing? Okay, I didn't know. So, okay. So here's, okay. I would agree that the resistance thing is actually very, 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 very strong. Nightingale still survives. I'm actually interested, and hey, you could call this a schmoke take, but I'm going to ask this question, because if we're looking at medics, and Aya is benching every single one of them, except for Nightingale, does she bench Lumen? And the only reason why I ask that is because Lumen can heal the other thing that she can't. Status, whatever. Status. She does elemental, he does status. Does he get benched or no? That's the question. Because I'm curious, would Aya out heal the damage that the unit would take from the status bullshit or not? That's the question. I'll bring this back up. I think Lumen lives because he brings back stun units and that'll give him something at least. But only sometimes, most times he's gone too. Bye! But see, that's what I was thinking. The things that he can heal or that he can prevent, can Aya out heal that? Aya cannot take out Nightingale because however much percentage percentage resistance that she brings is just ridiculously good it's you can't outtake that because it's arts damage and just how the damage calculations work however i think aya takes out every single other fucking medic in this game and lumen would be my only case but i'd still have to test the healing that she does From this video, she's not that crazy. If it's only one op, she's healing only. Let's see. I think the non-medic medics don't count still. They're their own thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. While we okay, so for those that are participating in this entirety, Starcraft, can you make a poll and can you say does Aya belong on the left side or the right side or none at all? Left side being she's definitively on the list. Right side means we'd have to make an argument for her. Not at all on the list means she's not at all on the list. Can you do a poll like that? Because at the end of the day, I'm curious to see what y'all would have to say about this. H 
Hang on. I think Aya is left side, but I'd like second looks at the right side ops. Uh, so here are all the operators, and then on this side are all the medics. So y'all take whatever time you need. Reed heals only by committing war crimes, Lamau. I think Mount Mountain and Calcit don't make it, but Golden Glow and Posey, we should look again. That's fine. The question is, is just what side does Aya belong to? Left, right, or none at all? Because that way, at the end of the day, at least we're getting somewhere. And then we're able to go and say, what do we need to do from here? What do we need to talk about from here to either get them off the list or to keep them on the list? Right now, I just want to see, does she belong on either side of the list or not at all? That's all I'm trying to get right now. I just wanted to make sure we look at the standouts on the right again if Aya goes left. This man in his golden glow and posy, Pazemka. Okay, and then while that poll goes on, we'll watch this video. Thank you, StarCraft. I appreciate you very much. Thank you. You can't even get I'm not I'm not even gonna say nothing. We just gonna watch this motherfucking thing. I'll fight for Golden Glow and Pazemka too, I see. So StarCraft said from this video she's not that crazy. If it's only one operator that she's healing. I think that was pretty pretty crazy. That she can still keep someone like this alive. And it's not someone that's ridiculously tanky. Like how crazy does her healing have to be? If I knew what stage this was, I would go in there, take the same units or something similar and test it with other healers and see what would happen. That'd be the only way to test it. Starcraft does have a good point though. Will she be able to hold a whole map through her healing? That's something I'm not sure we can judge yet. It said 9-2. Oh shit. Yo, thank you. Tug's argument was that Aya replaces medics. I'm saying she's benching damn near every medic. The only one, obviously, Nightingale. I don't know about Lumen. There would be testing needing for that. When do you need to heal the entire map? When you have multiple lanes you have to cover? When you have more than one box that you have to defend? This person had to retreat like bruh. We do see that she did- look. This, I would say, is an argument against your point. She's healing one character, and that character isn't dying. Bro, I'm not gonna lie. If I have what I feel like is if I have a Nightingale or a Telopsis or a whoever trying to heal this Gavial, 
Gaviel dies. That's what I feel like. Right side? Okay, we have her on the right side. I got it. I'll put it there. But if it's two, she can't be efficient. Well, there's no mobs coming out right now. Look at this. Okay, here's okay. Here's a point for efficiency, right? Her skill only has half of the bar left. Obviously, the unit at the top is it Qbi or Inus, whichever one. I don't know. They're at the top. They're out of her range. But she's healing both of them. You see these beams of light? She's healing both of them while her skill is up. And then she goes and says, well, I can't reach you with normal heals. I'm just going to heal this one dude. At two minutes. Okay, this is at 152. That's still not in the range. So, they got picked up because this rock was going to kill them. Uh, see, she doesn't reach right there. But look, while the healing is needed, it just explodes, so we don't even get to really see that test. But it's still not huge healing. Retreat because the wall, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the little rock column falls down and is going to kill. Medic can outheal. Can outheal flamethrower, but not falling rock. Arc Knight's OP, Lamau. Rock would have killed. Yeah, I agree. Gabriel is in range of her normal range. Exactly. Yeah, she is. She is. Yeah. <clears throat> and then this part right here, I think is just ridiculous. See how many healers it takes to keep up Gaviel on 9-2 right now? Okay. That's, that's a great test. Uh, I'm not going to lie, though. I need to take a piss first. So we're going to go take a... I'm going to go take a piss. We'll continue this discussion tomorrow. If we even want to, honestly, I had a lot of fun talking about art nights like this. I feel like this is that whole conversation and discussion was some shit that I don't really know where else I could have that with. So I really appreciate y'all chilling and hanging out and and talking the way we did. It's so over, Lamont. Thank you.